We're diving into the heart of South America, the incredible country of Ecuador. Whether you're dreaming of traveling here and exploring the diverse land, or you're considering making it your home one day, I've got the lowdown on the pros and cons of traveling as well as living here in Ecuador. Let's get started with the pros. If you know me, you know I'm gonna talk about the incredible landscape and beauty here in Ecuador. It is so amazing to just look outside of your window, like I'm doing right now, and see all oh, that Ecuador has to offer in terms of the mountains, the volcanoes, the clouds. Oh my goodness, I'm making myself excited just talking about these things and looking right outside of my own window. Ecuador is literally a visual feast from the lush Amazon rainforest to the iconic Galapagos Islands, which I look forward to traveling to hopefully in a couple of months. Ecuador is just stunning. Now picture this, a melting pot of traditions, cultures, and flavors. Ecuador is a kaleidoscope of diversity that includes the indigenous populations, mestizos, as well well as Afro-Ecuadorians. All of these groups have been and are still very influential in the makeup of Ecuador. So get this, if you're like me and my husband and you consider yourself to be kind of a savvy spender, then you are going to love Ecuador for its cost of living. Compared to a lot of Western countries, including my own, the United States, the cost of living here in Ecuador is not gonna burn a hole in your pocket. And I feel like you'll have a little bit more balance in the things that you're able to do because you'll have more of a comfortable living if you do decide to live here and or your travels can feel a little more financially rewarding too. We really enjoy going on adventures here in Ecuador. We don't really spend a lot on the different excursions that we do go to. I mean we like our relaxing trips like to Otavalo, to the haciendas, we like to eat good and none of this stuff really breaks the bank for us so we are able to do more of these types of trips and it's so much fun. Now food prices here have in fact increased I would say inflation seems to be everywhere so do know that before you arrive here but you are still saving a pretty penny in my opinion depending on if you're shopping more locally or shopping local brands at the supermarket versus those high-end more expensive imported items that you really don't need in the first place. Now let's talk health. Ecuador is known to have pretty decent health care here, I would say so for myself and for my husband. We've had a couple of things done here. I had prenatal care and visits here and those were pretty good. The cost for those as well didn't necessarily break the bank, which was good. And let's get a little bit personal in terms of healthcare and the delivery of my child. I didn't actually have him here in Ecuador. I went back to the United States and that was not because of poor health care here or an expensive delivery cost or anything like that. It was more of my own comfortability with my language skills when it comes to like doing something important like giving birth. I didn't feel comfortable with doing that because I didn't really speak the language at the time. But I do know a couple of expats in particular who have given birth in Ecuador and who have had amazing experiences. The favorable climate. I know. I know. In one of my videos that I posted what last year, I talked a lot about how cold I felt it was here in Ecuador. And yes, I still stand by that. I do feel like Ecuador runs on the cooler side, but I love it. This is my ideal climate. It really is. I'm not really a tropical girly. I don't love the beaming heat, even when it's beaming heat here because we're so close to the sun. It can feel ridiculous and i think it's kind of cool that it changes throughout the day because within 15 minutes it could be hot it could be chilly it could be very cold <laughs> i've experienced it all and what i will just say is pack layers definitely pack your layers and just be prepared for whatever the climate throws at you but i love it and i think that you would love it too if you're like me the dreaded cons list you all are probably waiting for this before all the pros because we all like a little drama let's get started with the first con which is language barriers and i've talked about this ad nauseum ad nauseum ad nauseum i wish i knew more spanish because my lack of spanish is pretty disgusting I and mean, i'm very hard on myself i will say that for the most part 
people are not out here just speaking English and why should they? This is not an English speaking country. Here it is very challenging and it's a good challenge because I think with folks not automatically diverting to English, it means you have to do your homework, you have to study, you have to be up on your language. Really start now. If you're planning to travel here, get your common phrases ready and you can let me know if you want some content about what common phrases here look like. If you're planning to move here, then you hopefully have at least a year window to six months to get some Spanish under your belt. Just get it together, okay? Because it will serve you so well. Let's just get into it and talk about the bureaucracy here in Ecuador. When it comes to documents and doing things, it is slow. Things do take a while. For example, getting your emissions test and your registration for your car situated. It's a lot. In particular for us, it took us so long to get our visas to come here. We literally got our visas at nine o'clock and our flight was at two o'clock. And my husband was like rushing downtown in DC to the office and back and forth. And it was a whole hoopla of a mess, but we got it done. It just sucked that it took as long as it did. I recommend that if you are, you know, not a fan of bureaucracy and just things taking a long time, you need to start and plan things earlier than when you'll actually need it. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. No drama here. <sighs> right, we're really getting into it, y'all. Mm. Traffic here sucks. But what sucks the most is when the infrastructure just breaks down. Like, you're gonna put in a new street and that means rerouting traffic like 30 minutes around the neighborhood because there's really no other way to get through you can't really manage okay i'm talking a lot about myself right now let's just say this similar to the bureaucracy things take time when it comes to the infrastructure here and the traffic is just so heavy and it's not like people are not gonna have to go to work and do the regular things that they do and so things just get congested and things just pile up and you just have to have patience honestly you have to have a level of patience that is just very different than what you're probably used to in your home country or in other countries, frankly. And I would love to do a compare and contrast of the different countries that I've lived in and when it comes to things like traffic and whatever else you wanna know about, just let me know in the comments below. Also, none of this is the end of the world. I mean, eventually we get to where we're needing to go. You just need to manage your time better. So let's talk about economic inequality. You definitely see that here, like you do in other countries, but here in particular, you do see poverty at very, very low levels. And then you see a lot of wealthy people at very high levels. But I would say the poverty aspect and the low income aspect is quite heavy here from what I've seen. And it's just something to be aware of, especially if you just travel here and you're not really immersing yourself into the day-to-day -day of people's lives and frequenting different spaces within different communities. And if you do live here and you see certain aspects of economic inequality present themselves daily, it's right in your face. But what I will say to put a positive spin on this is there are quite a few community initiatives that I have seen popping up here and there that are in support of these lower income communities. And I think that that's really fantastic. And if you wanna know more about some of these initiatives, definitely let me know and I can make a video or a post or something about it. You know, I'm on the internet, so we'll figure out how we can get this information to you as well. Last but not least, the altitude adventure. Now, I'm gonna say this first and foremost, I am an altitude girly, like I, came from Colorado, Denver to be exact, 5280 in terms of the elevation there to Ecuador where it's what, like over 9,000 feet. And I have to say, arriving here, didn't get sick. And I was pregnant and I was fine. But I will say this, if you are coming from a place where the altitude is significantly lower than Ecuador and Colorado, then you are going to need to brace yourself because you can get altitude sickness and it is terrible. Not from my own experiences, but from other people's experiences and my own research. Altitude sickness is nothing to play with and it can wipe you out for your whole entire trip. So 
traveling here and your trip isn't very long, you want to make sure you're preparing your body before you arrive to Ecuador, especially Quito, so that you don't get sick from the altitude here. It's very important. And there you have it, the Ecuadorian roller coaster of wonders as well as challenges that are honestly not going to ruin your trip or ruin your time living here as well. Challenges that I mentioned are just things to get used to and adjust to as well. And the pros that I mentioned are just icing on top of an already amazing and beautiful country. So take care and happy travels or good luck on your future move to Ecuador.